Hey guys, I'm Torin. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Today I'm going to be setting up the month of August in my bullet journal. Now last month I did the setup for July as the theme of Jordan and I, in that video I asked you which country you wanted to see for August. So we had Angola, Austria or Argentina as the options and I received so many comments and lovely feedback and you all gave me your votes and I counted them up and the winner was Austria. So that's what I'll be doing my bullet journal theme as today but don't lose heart if you did vote for Argentina or Angola, I still will do them. It'll just be down the track. It might be next year or so. Um, so yeah, let's see what I come up with for Austria and I hope you enjoy the video. Let's go. So I'll get started with a flip through of the setup from last month, which was in the Jordan theme for July. Um, and I will just put a few shout outs to some of the comments that I really loved on that video. I'll put them on screen here and I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you for responding. Got some great feedback and these are just a few of my favorites, but I appreciate every single one. So now it's time to get started with the month of August in our Austria theme. Now, Austria was full of inspiration. After doing a bit of research, there was so much content that I could have chosen for this setup. So I had to be um, a little bit choosy and I just knew that as soon as I think of Austria, I think of the beautiful landscapes. So I wanted to start my cover page with a, with a stunning picture of the mountains and a beautiful lake. So I've chosen Lake Vordera and I've put my traveler girl there in the scenery, taking a photo of it, because I know that's what I would be doing if I was there right now, which I wish I was. So this lake is situated near the town of Gosso, and so this is actually called Vordera Gossosi, if I'm saying that right, and it's the biggest of three lakes that are in those mountains, the Duxtein Mountains. So I've tried to capture as much as I could of the reference photo by using acrylic paint in this cover page. I initially wanted to do a watercolor painting to just give it like a soft effect, um, but then I actually did the drawing straight into the bullet journal without thinking. Um, I should have used a separate piece of watercolor paper like I normally do when I do my watercolor spreads. So, but that was no worries. I just thought I'd go in and get some practice with my acrylics instead. And luckily this paper in this journal handles it fine. So um, yeah, it just meant a lot more time involved though because I can't help but get a little too detailed when I work with acrylic paints. One thing to always remember when you're using acrylic paints or when you're just doing a colored drawing of a landscape is you wanna use the lighter colors in the background and any darker colors are coming into the foreground. That's what gives it that sort of depth effect happening in your painting. So that's why I've gone for this nice light blue in the background and then building it towards the front using a darker green for all the foliage and the forest trees in the foreground. I'm now dabbing in some light shades of orange and yellows in the tops of those trees. In the photo reference that I'm using, they've got these yeah, stunning colors in the trees that look really aut autumnal. Um, so I wanted to showcase them as well. Now I'm skipping down to draw, to paint in some of the um, fence that runs along the edge of the lake. And in hindsight, I kind of wish I'd waited till after I'd done the lake itself to do that part. I'll explain why in a minute. And now I'm moving on to the rock face that's on the side. So this is all like a rock effect and I didn't know how I was going to achieve this with the paint. So I really just guessed and I was just dabbing and building up with the colors that I saw in the image. Now, if you look closely at this rock, it can look a little bit of a hot mess, but in the overall scheme of things, when you're looking at the picture as a whole, I think it does give that effect that it is a rock face. So that was lucky. Now going in and adding lots more colors to those trees in the foreground. I think the brightness of all these colors is what drew me to the photo. Um, so I'm hoping to reflect that in this picture. And it's very different to the cover page of my last month as well, because I did that all in basically one sepia toned color. So it's nice to have a bit of a variety. And now I'm moving on to painting the lake in. Now this lake, I'm starting off with a light blue on the left hand side. I really wished at this point that I hadn't put in the fence yet because it was very tricky to get into those little nooks between the posts. 
um, but it worked in the end, but in hindsight, should have definitely done that fence afterwards. And I'm just blending it across as much as I can to go into the right hand side and get nice and dark from where the mountain would be shadowing onto that lake. And then just adding ripples to try and give a glassy rippled effect to the water. And then we move on to the final details of the painting and it's starting to come to life. Now I normally add a separate little icon for the letter of the month, the A, but I felt like it would have impacted too much on the image itself. So I decided to hide the A, well not really hide it, it's very visible, but the A is there on the right hand side as kind of a reflection in the water, like a triangle on top and then reflecting in the water, sort of giving off the effect of an A. And now that I've finished the painting part of this page, I'm moving on to using my gold pen to add an accent line all around the shape. So I've done it in this kind of elongated oval or pill sort of shape and I'm doing my cutout on the side, which I love to do for the Dutch door. And then just adding flecks of gold throughout the picture, including the word August on the back of her jumper. I love to sneak in the month um, somewhere in the picture and I couldn't think of anywhere else to put it, but I'm really happy that I chose on the jumper. I think it's a cute little quirky piece of information right there. Last minute highlights, the cover page is finito. Now because of the size of this painting on the cover page, I couldn't actually fit the baby calendar in. So I'm doing a calendar on this page instead. This is where I tend to put all the birthday reminders. So important dates that I don't want to forget go on this calendar right here. I'm using a really classical font for the August in a nice cursive and just running a little arch around the side of the page just to add interest to the page really. Now I love to put the nation's flag into these setups. So here I'm doing my YouTube growth tracker and I'm doing it in the Austrian flag and which is all red and white. And then on the top section of the right hand page, I'm going to do my cleaning schedule. Now I originally did a cleaning schedule in my January setup that was meant for the whole year, but I don't go back to it enough. So I've decided since last month to put a little reminder of the cleaning tasks that I want to do for that month. Um, there's obviously the weeklies and bi-weeklies already in my mind. They're like ingrained in there. So the monthly ones I do forget about. So I put them here so that I can mark them off when I achieve them each month. So now for the final piece on this page, I wanted to include a quote from the Austrian neurologist Sigmund Freud. Um, one of his quotes was, one day in retrospect, the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful. And I thought this was quite relevant and hopefully true to what we're going through right now. Um, so I've put that there to remind me throughout the month to stay, stay positive really. And I also added in some commas later on to make sure I read that properly because without the punctuation, it can read a little bit incorrect. And now I'm adding in some gold to the border of this page in big arcs. That was basically to reflect the ripples in the lake and it sort of follows that shape, just adding something nice to that cover page as well. And that finishes off this spread. Now I'm moving on to the next page, which is my needs and wants page, which I call need to have and nice to have. And now this one, I really wanted to do to include sound of music in this setup somehow. Um, I did think of doing the typical shot of Julie Andrews on the, on the hilltops in Austria. Um, but I just felt like it had been done a little bit too much. So I kind of wanted to do something a little bit more subtle. So I thought about the words in one of the songs there that is a very famous one and it's always in my head, which is the um, my favorite things. And I thought that had relevance for this page as well because it talks about the things that you, that your favorite things, the things you want, they're nice to have. So I chose to do the roses with raindrops on them and the brown paper packages tied up with string 
these are a few of my favorite things you know what I'm getting at um, and I'm just mapping them out onto this page and coloring them in with my Prismacolor pencils as well And now continuing with that theme of the favorite things song, I decided to choose a couple of more food related items um, from the song. So I've gone for the bright copper kettles and the crisp apple strudel. I usually love to do food items like the famous dishes from each country on this meal plan page. So that worked out perfectly. So the apple strudel was the centerpiece for this page and it was a little bit tricky to draw. I'm not sure if it looks like it in the end, but it all, it all works out. And to make sure you knew it was apple strudel, I made sure to put some apples in the picture so that no one could be confused with what it was. <laughs> and I also, to add another little um, subtle hint towards Sound of Music, by creating a tablecloth um, made from fabric of something that she does in the movie. Um, if anyone can guess what fabric this is and what is done with this fabric, let me know in the comments down below. Um, yeah, I'll test you on your Sound of Music knowledge. <laughs> And then just finishing this spread off in my colored pencils and some white pen to emphasize some powdered sugar on top of that apple strudel. Um, and by the way, that meal plan is where I schedule all my dinners for the week because I need to have a place where I write them down so that there's no confusion about what's being eaten throughout the week. And now we're moving on to my favorite spread of the monthly setups, which is my mind map page. Um, I always love these pages and I've started this theme of where I choose a, a lady or a face of some sort to draw. Um, and I do that realistically and then use textures on the outside or the markers on the outside to add some graphicness to the picture. Um, so I was, I was torn between doing um, a few people for this. Marie Antoinette was one of them. Um, then I thought of maybe doing Julie Andrews as well. But then I read into a very famous lady called, or nicknamed Sissy. She was the Empress um, Elizabeth of Austria. Um, so there was a lot of, there was a very famous movie trilogy made about her and a couple of subscribers actually mentioned her as well. So I read into her and thought she would be perfect for this page. Now, instead of doing the drawing of the actual Empress Elizabeth, um, I went for the the actor who portrayed her in the movie Sissy, who's called Romy Schneider, and she was Austrian as well. And this film really set her um, career alight. So I thought that worked out quite well. And she's very beautiful. So I've thought she was a perfect face to put in this scenario here. Now, I really want to watch the movie Sissy. I haven't seen it before, but it's going to be on my list of things to watch because I think it would be very interesting. Just learning a little bit about the Empress's life um, sounds pretty amazing. She was married at 16 to the Emperor of Austria, Franz Joseph. They had four kids together, but one unfortunately died in infancy. Um, and then the others um, survived longer, but there's some tragic in their stories as well. Um, she didn't like public life, um, but was obsessed with her own body and beauty. Um, so I found that interesting, but she was also really helpful towards the people of Austria and interested in helping the poor and things like that. So sounds like a very intriguing lady and I wouldn't mind watching the movie so I can learn more. But now more on to what I'm actually doing in this spread. I am using my markers to create um, texture in this dress. So I'm using strokes to show shadow and folds in the fabric. This is a really easy way to create something interesting. And I love doing this on the mind map pages. Now you might've seen me testing out colors before I went in with the blue. And that's because I really wanted to try a different color. I seem to always end up using blue on these spreads, mainly because I see it as like a freeing color. And this is the mind map page where I want to free up my mind. So I like the thought of using blue, but I did want to do something different. But alas, I ended up with blue because I just can't see it in any other color. So I think maybe like a deep green would have worked, like an emerald green, but we'll see if I get a little bit more adventurous next month. <laughs> now she's wearing these jewels in her hair that I think might be Edelweiss, which is the national flower. Also another song in Sound of Music, amazing. Um, so I did the Edelweiss um, flower all through this spread and they are a very impressive looking flower. They kind of remind me of a furry daisy that has extra 
petals. Very unusual looking. So um, I'll put a picture on the screen so you can see what they look like. So Edelweiss, very interesting. Then just titling this page in a nice cursive font and finishing off with some little white sparkles around her and popping in the yellow on the flowers and this page is finished. I got very excited at the fact that her sash that went over her arm actually continued that shape that I'd already created. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together unexpectedly. And so now we're moving on to the next page, which is my goodliness page. I decided to focus this page on Mozart, um, the famous composer from Austria. Um, so I've chosen a really very classic font and I'm actually sketching out these gardens or the Mirabelle Palace and Gardens, which is in Salzburg, which is where Mozart was born. These gardens looked incredible with these, you know, shaped topiary trees and these little beautiful flower hedges. Um, I decided to keep this page mostly simple. So just using the black um, Pigma Micron to outline everything. And then I went in with a feature color of this teal. And the reason I use this aqua teal sort of color is because of the roofs on the, um, on the building behind that you see in the background and also on the statue of Mozart that I'm going to be doing on the other page. Um, there's lots of teal in that too. And I will just put that on screen here so you can see these strange details. I don't know what the statue is made out of, um, but for some reason, I don't know if it's over time, it's kind of rusted into this wicked teal color. So I was glad to use that in the spread to just give that pop of color without getting too dramatic with colored pencils and things like that. Now I was really loving how this drawing was coming out. I was using that same sort of stroke shading that I tend to do a lot, but I was being quite um, quite specific with where those shadows were going and I loved it at this point until I added the teal in and because I was copying the picture to add in all over its face it kind of ended up looking a bit like a bird had pooed on it or something so I was a bit disheartened and I was wondering how I could fix it um, so while I'm filling in my habits I had a thought and I was like oh maybe I'll use a marker some gray marker to dial down those shadows and then just keep the white highlight and I think it worked better. It looks less like bird droppings now. So I'm really happy with how this page turned out in the end. It's quite simple and it was easy to achieve and I think it looks really classic, which is nice. So now I'm on to my first weekly setup, which was for week one, which is actually just Saturday and Sunday um, so that I can get started on a full week as of the Monday. Now for this one, I wanted to do something straight away when I th first thought of Austria what came to mind for me was Arnold Schwarzenegger so I really wanted to put him in a spread I didn't know how I would do it um, but I came up with this one and I'm really happy with how it turned out so I've done a portrait of him as Harry Tasker from or the character that he plays in True Lies one of my favorite movies of all time um, and I've done it all in just using Pigma Micron, so just fine liner and using the cross hatching technique, which I love to use. Um, and I've just, I've colored in the background really dark to give it that strong contrast, which I think is really cool um, for the graphic side of things. So it looks, looks pretty impactful and dramatic. So I'm looking forward to using the agenda on this week. Um, I'm a big fan of Arnie. And if any of you out there are a big fan as well, just let me know down in the comments if you feel the love for the Schwarzenegger. And this page, by the way, is where I write all the tasks that I need to achieve for that particular week. And then I schedule them. So I put a little dot next below the day of the week that I'm going to finish or start that particular task. And that's how I never forget items on my to-do list. Oh, and what a coincidence, Harry, Tasker. And it's where you put your tasks. <laughs> Gold. <laughs> and I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please click that thumbs up button to help me out and consider subscribing and turning on the notifications bell to be warned of when I upload my new videos. And that is the final page and we are now set up for August, ready to go in our Austria theme. I hope you enjoyed it. 
And if you guys want to help me out by choosing the next month's theme, um, so we've got September, so we need a country starting with S and there's, there's so many good ones. I've had to narrow it down to three that I would enjoy setting up and they are, the choices are South Africa, South Korea or Sri Lanka. So I've gone for a bit different ones and I hope you guys can help me out by choosing which would be your favorite to see down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.